today for me, um, the spirit, and the spirit of Dwayne Abata um, is strong in me. He was instrumental in building the first North American Taiko Conference in 1997 and forged one of our foundational practices to gather together as a Taiko community. I think of how he modeled how we continue gathering even virtually today. And I remember Dwayne every year on my birthday since he passed in 2000, 20 years ago. And I think that he may be saying, look at how vibrantly we keep on coming together. So I'm going to ask all of you, who do you want to remember? Who do you want to make sure is not forgotten? So I'm going to ask everyone right now, go and press that unmute, please unmute right now. And I'd like you to say their name. Say their name. Go ahead. Hey. You can write their names in the chat too, but as you write it, say it too. Do not mute, keep on going. There are still, there's 135 of you. I'd love to hear more. Empty Kimi. Ken Takashima. Harry. Clever Takishida. Empty Betsy. George Omoto. Phyllis. Empty. Reverend Tonkarai. This K. ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがと
I think black women taught us that rage has political, social, and cultural power. There's also actually a tangible connection between Ra and black resistance, which is that uh, Ra shares its roots with black activism in the 60s and 70s. It was at UBC in Vancouver where this Japanese American professor uh, who was inspired by black power mentored a group of Asian Canadian undergrads to form the Asian Canadian Coalition. And it was the political mobilizations and the grounds laid by that coalition that created space for Ra to emerge a few decades later. When I drum, I feel like I am joining in and continuing a lineage of black resistance and black struggle. And it's a way for me to show that um, my blackness and my Asianness aren't separate, but that uh, we actually share responsibilities for fostering each other's resilience. So today we're listening to stories and hearing perspectives we don't always hear through the lens of race. We're developing our practice of paying attention, noticing, to what, noticing what is being said and what's not being said, what is here and what's not here. We're developing awareness. This is not an always easy. This is not always an easy thing to do. Uh, we're not just listening with our ears and our minds, but we're also listening with our hearts and our bodies. What's going on in our bodies as we listen, as we witness, as we pay attention? Let's take a moment for our bodies with Debbie Lynn from Connected Body. Thank you. Um, Let's start with offering and receiving support from one another. And let's bring our hands together in front of our chest. And we'll inhale in between and exhale at the end of each movement. Inhale and offer. Inhale and receive. Inhale and offer. Inhale and receive. Inhale and offer. Inhale and receive. And offer and receive. Now we flip our palms. Exhale as we twist to your right and to the left. going. Now we go diagonally down. Imagine you're kayaking through molasses. Four more times. One more each side. And rest. Good. Now separate your legs a little bit wider. And we're going to relax to your right. And really feel that you're using your ear to listen for the secret out in the far end of the ocean. Move as you're a seaweed floating in the wide ocean. Inhale as you switch to the other side. And exhale, relax. Inhale. Exhale, relax. Let the sound move you. And relax. Really open your ear. Try to listen for the secret. Try to listen for the wisdom. And see where this takes you. One more time. And slowly bring yourself back up. Bring your legs a little closer. One hand behind your neck, one hand behind your lower back. If this bothers your shoulder, you can bring the hand in front of your belly. You're gonna first relax 
As you inhale, you're going to elongate your spine and expand and breathe in everything around you. And exhale, relax. Inhale, breathe in all the knowledge, all the wisdom, and exhale, soften it in. And again, inhale, expand. And exhale, relax. Inhale, expand. Exhale, release. Again, inhale, expand. Exhale, relax. One more time, inhale, expand. And exhale, relax. Now bring your arms down by your side. Imagine you have a dimmable light source inside of you. I want you to first start relax. And as you breathe in, the light source start brightening and shining and you can radiate through. And exhale, soften. As you inhale, you slowly brighten up and it's generating heat and you're radiating through. And exhale, relax. Feel that this warmth, this light can shine through even across our digital platforms. You can feel one another. And exhale, soften in. One more time, inhale. And exhale, relax. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Debbie. It has been um, an honor and I'm super grateful that you've been on this journey for all three of our uh, gatherings. And Thank you. my body quite, yeah, prolifically. Thank you. So over the past uh, two weeks, um, I have been able uh, to connect and get to know Mila Natasha from Rage, Raging Asian Women in Toronto, Canada, whose um, movie, movies or story that you heard earlier. Um, our conversations flowed when we got to talk with each other this past two weeks about Taiko, identity, racism, sustainability, self-care, and even how we're feeling. Here are some excerpts of our time talking together um, through Zoom, which we followed by a Taiko piece, Unhaunted, which was a particularly poignant Taiko experience for Mila. I'm excited to be in conversation with, um, with Mila and Natasha, and I um, have been getting to know you. What are your thoughts about the opportunity of now? I think for, for me, I'm drawn more to thinking about now uh, as a more relational moment where we are living with the past, we're living with the future, we're accountable to all of these kind of times. Um, and thinking about now in this relational way, I think also helps us to be accountable to the histories that we kind of on a daily basis can ignore or um, or pretend aren't happening or pretend aren't, aren't going aren't ongoing. I do wonder if you might talk a little bit more about how your identity has inspired, influenced, and also of what is your relationship with all of this in the now too. In the last couple of years in particular have really been about me exploring what it means to still be a visibly black person, to have black um, Afro-Venezuelan ancestry, to have that as part of my history. Um, but that's happened in some ways at the same time as I've been in Raw. So I've actually been exploring a lot of my blackness through Taiko, which maybe feels very unexpected. Um, part of exploring that has actually been me realizing that even in a space like this where we think oh there aren't many black people here or blackness isn't really relevant here it gets actually always there anti-blackness is a global struggle um, it impacts everyone in the same way that white supremacy structures um, these hierarchies anti-blackness is the base of that same structure which means that anti-blackness is is relevant in all spaces um, countering it benefits everybody <laughs> thank you so much i 
I would love for you to talk a little bit more about Unhaunted. Um, maybe you can give us some context of that. So yes, what I was saying about the difficulty of being present with all that's happening, um, I think this is where Taiko becomes a useful and really beautiful practice for me because Taiko is also an act of being present, um, being in conversation with the drum, being in relation with each other, and it's kind of a way of training our minds and our hearts and our bodies to do that work of noticing, um, of letting go of ego a little bit, um, of, of paying attention, and these are things that we learn through Taiko, so it, it also becomes a place where we can sit in that now space. Um, and also recognize that doing that is a sort of intentional act. And I think I was feeling my piece of the unhaunted um, performance in that way of this is a moment where I get to uh, be in presence with the ghosts, with the ancestors that have something to teach me about how to stay alive.
From the beginning, we have been in touch with members of our community who identify as Black or African heritage or mixed heritage. We understood that this needed to be a conversation. We've been both listening to their needs and responding and respecting their space. For this plenary, Wanda Kirchu and Sylvia King, both longtime members of our community, would like to make an offering. Wanda will address us live and Sylvia will follow with a reading. Wanda, would you like to begin? Hello. I watched uh, the video with Sensei Endo, which was part of our homework over, you know, last week. And I was very happy to hear his experience on growing up during World War II. His experience, though different from mine, is also similar. His family experience oppression and racism from the dominant culture, basically as all people of, culture, people of color communities have. This is what I have meant throughout our continued conversation about our having a similar thread that runs through all of our experiences. It is difficult to have a worldview at this time. We're all going through so many things, but I do hope to bring that point of view to our discussion. As Sensei Endo said, it's time to stop being a victim and take back our power. Thank you. I'd like to thank Michelle and Karen for giving me this opportunity to share during this opening plenary. Rather than speak about my own personal experiences, I want to take this moment to read what is called the Black National Anthem in memory of two civil rights pioneers who passed away two days ago, namely C.T. Vivian and Representative John Lewis, both of whom worked alongside Dr. Martin Luther King in the nonviolent struggle for civil rights, voting rights, racial equality, desegregation, the fight for basic human rights, and the treatment of all individuals with dignity and respect. Lift Every Voice and Sing was written by NAACP leader James Weldon Johnson in 1899. Lift every voice and sing, till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise, high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed? We have come over a way that with tears have been watered, we have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloomy past, till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places our God, where we met thee, lest our heart drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee, shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand, true to our God, true to our native land. Thank you, both Wanda and Phil. Um, just, uh, I'm touched. And we really would like to celebrate one more story. Um, this next person is somebody that I've intersected uh, Tycho Paz with for many years and have worked with deeply since the beginnings of Unit Sozal, David Wells. Um, not only is David a longtime Unit Sozal ensemble member, he is a freelance Tycho artist who also works with Asano Tycho US and teaches at Los Angeles Tycho Institute. David, um, after hearing all these stories that have been shared, I wonder what is on your mind. Hello, everyone. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank um, everyone who, who has shared already uh, today. Um, I know some, not everyone's here, but 
Um, I think it's really important to hear uh, the various stories because, um, you know, there are there are so many stories uh, from the Black community that are relevant to I think everyone, um, and all of the stories are, are well. I should say all those stories are not the same. There's so many different stories, and I think it's important to highlight as many different dimensions of those stories as we can. Um, certainly, it was powerful to hear about um, Mila's experience. I, I've never met Mila, but um, she's clearly like someone who has put time and um, energy into uh, thinking about her family history, um, how that affects her now, and has brought that into her art, and I think that's amazing. Um, it was he hearing, uh, the Black National Anthem uh, reminds me of my, my grandmother used to sing that song to me all the time. Um, and so it's, it was very powerful to, to hear that uh, coming back into this space too. I think it's a, it's a song that encompasses both like pain and hope extraordinarily well. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it just really has a lot to do with the power of art to give people motivation and hope to move forward. Well, we're about to share something, um, and it's from our project, uh, Constant State of Otherness. It's centered, this project has been centered in the acknowledgement of the historical and divisive ways that othering has pervasively and insidiously affected our communities. Uh, this show that David was a part of, as well as Ian, uh, Ian Burvey, Vicky Zhang, Paul Watanabe, and myself, um, was actually going to be toured in May um, but it's now been postponed for an unknown time, most likely in 2021. Uh, literally this past week, we all came together virtually um, as an ensemble to work or to turn one of our vignettes, Ancestral Calling, into a video work. Um, I just want to pause and thank. Um, first, I want to thank Yuta Kato, who helped with the editing for uh, the Raw Unhaunted piece. Thank you so much. And right now I want to thank Gabe Mobilia Lopez, who had a lot of late nights with me this week. Um, to help me a lot, a lot of late nights to make uh, this artistic vignette happen. Um, we are going to be debuting. It's today you all get to see something we're not going to show publicly because we're going to show you all our rough cut um, version. And our plan is to actually make a public version that will be shared next month. But David, this is really centered um, and around your stories and your identity. So I'd love for you to talk about this particular video. So working with Michelle, um, one of the things that we were digging into in this otherness project is um, uh, like personal, personal story um, and identity. And one of the things that just kept coming through for me was the connection to family. Um, I, have, I have had the privilege of having a, a very strong source of uh, family support, um, which for me absolutely includes chosen family too. You know, the family you're born with, but also the, the people that you choose to bring into your family circle. Um, and I think the, the strength of the roots that that provides um, and the support that, that I have gotten from that has, is something that, that really matters to me. And it's a huge part of how I have gotten to be here where I am today. Um, so, uh, thinking especially about, um, you know, my my grandparents and their parents, um, some of whom were um, actually emancipated from slavery, some of my great grandparents, um, just makes me realize how we're not that far removed from some of the, the serious struggles that black people have been through in this country um, and are still going through today. Um, and inspired by that thought, and I, I love the song um, Grandma's Hands by, by Bill Withers, um, all of that kind of went into the pot and got swirled around and, and turned into a, one melody that came out. Um, and Michelle guided me to expand that into um, more work based on my childhood experiences and again, a lot of uh, my family relationships. So some of that came out here.
can't keep doing this. You saw that ball, Granddaddy. It was in the other batter's box. Yeah. I saw it. But your reaction got you kicked out of the next game, too. Did you think about what this means to your team? No. You can't keep doing this. Are you calm now? Yes, sir. Yes, Granny? Will you help me take out the trash? You can have a cookie when you're done. Yes, ma'am! DJ? Yeah, Mommy? Yeah? I mean, yes. Yes, what? Yes, ma'am. Do you know how fast you were going? Yes, sir. About 65, 70. Have you been drinking tonight? No, sir. Any drugs or alcohol in the car? No, sir. Wait right there. You're free to go. Have a good evening. Yes, sir. You too, sir. <laughs>